Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. My first video on the Great Trilithon Stones at Baalbek received a huge amount of comments and I've been reading them over the past few days. Some people urged me to revisit the claims in the video, some disagreed with them profusely, others referred me to Andrew Collins and Graham Hancock's research, whilst others were quite supportive. On reflection, I should have gone into a bit more detail and presented more of a balanced argument because it is by no means a mystery solved. In this video, I'm going to do just that. I will revisit some of the points I've already made in part one, whilst addressing some key discussion points raised by viewers. There is no better place to start than the Roman column drum claimed to have been found underneath the Trilithon, which I said proves that chronologically the 800 ton megaliths must be Roman, a bold and as I have learnt somewhat contentious claim. So what do we know? The Roman column drum was discovered within the foundations of the western wall in the 1960s, and a picture is included in Friedrich Raguette's 1980 book titled Balbec. Raguette gets his information from Haratoun Kalyan, who was the chief engineer of the Lebanon Department of Antiquities. In Kalyan's paper, published in 1969, he directly mentions the drum in the foundations of the wall, saying, We can be reasonably certain that the Trilithon stones were put into place contemporaneously with the construction of the Temple of Jupiter. So already, by having the Trilithon stones contemporaneous with the temple, we have established the Roman provenance of the structure. He believed that the drum was a discarded one, and because of this he believes that the columns were already cut, or they were in the process of shaping when the foundations for the Trilithon had started. The Trilithon stones of Baalbek are part of a retaining wall on the west side of the temple complex, and not part of a specific temple. A hard, strong, heavy, granite column drum could therefore be effective ballast to strengthen the foundations of the wall. But we know that after the Roman occupation of the site, the Arabs regularly reused and repurposed Roman column drum fragments for repair work after numerous sieges on Baalbek, so the idea that the drum in question was for repair work cannot be discounted or dismissed. There are other column drums that like the one in question rather crudely stick out of the western wall. These other examples are above the Trilithon and are certainly the work of the later Arab occupation of the site. In recent years, Professor Daniel Lohman located the contentious column drum fragment and re-excavated it. He noted in a discussion with Graham Hancock that yes, the drum did stick out somewhat crudely from the wall, but as an expert in Roman architecture, he says the Romans were pragmatic and if they knew a foundation stone was to be covered over or hidden from view, they didn't bother to give it a perfect finish as there was little need. And also, the cylindrical drum was worked. It was flattened on the top and bottom and both sides, so that the western wall was solid and stable. The upper half of it, that wasn't under the ground surface, is also as flat as the wall. The drum fragment is also load-bearing. Lohman says that you cannot just replace and repair such a foundation block, and he notes that if there was a hole that was in need of repair, at least two of the blocks above it would have fallen or at least buckled. As you can see in the picture, the blocks resting on top of it do sit quite flush. He also notes that the Arab repairs of the Roman walls look very different to this specific foundation block, with little work done to the cylindrical drums, and asserts that the Arabs would never have been able to squeeze a block into the foundation and have such a tight fit. Hancock disagrees with Lohman and speculates that it could be a Roman repair to a pre-Roman wall, a claim that yes, could be possible, but the evidence does seem to be in Lohman's favour. So, Callian excavated the foundations in the 1960s and thought the drum was an original part of the wall, and Lohman excavated it again in the 21st century, in more detail, and also agreed. The German Archaeological Institute is also in full agreement. So, with regards to my previous part 1 video, the drum is evidence for a Roman origin and draws upon credible sources, but as Graham Hancock and others point out, there may be another interpretation. Many have said, and still say, that Baalbek is the most ancient structure in the world. 
According to Estefan el Duehi, Maronite Patriarch of Lebanon from 1670 to 1704, Baalbek is the most ancient building in the world. It was peopled by giants who were punished for their iniquities by the flood. Today, many agree that this is a truly ancient site, and many speculate that the Trilithon blocks hark back to a lost ancient civilization and could date back to the time of Gebekli Tepe. Geologist Professor Robert Schock has proved that the Great Sphinx of Egypt almost certainly dates back to a similar time, so if you're not convinced by the Roman drum evidence, can the Western Wall of Baalbek really be a monument this ancient? One argument I used in my last video is a geological weathering. Many people commented that the stone of the pregnant woman and the second large stone in the quarry were both covered until very recently, and were therefore less exposed than the Great Sphinx of Egypt, so that is a bad comparison when looking at erosion rates and weathering. They also point to Gebekli Tepe as proof that limestone 11,000 years old, if covered up, can still be preserved with incredible detail. These are good arguments put forward, and I appreciate people challenging my video. But I have a few points to make here, which, again, you are certainly free to challenge. Before the Younger Dryas, the climate of the area under study was warm and rainy, with high late levels and high precipitation. The Younger Dryas saw a cold phase and a decrease in rainfall, but everything changed during the Holocene. Between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago, the weather in Baalbek was warm and extremely wet, with high lake levels and high levels of precipitation, far greater than the present day. The wet climate, although not as extreme, but again far greater than the present day, continued until around 3000 BC, a time when conditions became more seasonal, with wet winters and dry summers. There was also a notable decrease in vegetation. Today, Lebanon almost gets as much rainfall as Britain, an average of 825mm per year versus Britain's 850. So, between 10,000 and 3000 BC, Lebanon, and specifically Baalbek, was rainy, wet and warm, the perfect conditions for chemical weathering, for rainwater percolating through the soil and onto the underlying bedrock. Limestone is highly susceptible to chemical weathering. So, the stone of the pregnant lady, as well as the second stone buried in the quarry, if truly ancient and if buried, would have surely been subjected to chemical weathering, which just isn't seen to the extent expected. Over the past 10,000 years, the site of Gebekli Tepe in Turkey was certainly a lot drier than Lebanon, and it was therefore less exposed to chemical weathering. Being purposefully covered up, it was certainly not prone to any other kind of weathering either. Furthermore, if the Baalbek Trilithon stones were already standing at the temple complex for thousands and thousands of years as some suspect, we would certainly see some signs of precipitation erosion, which would be similar to the rain erosion of the enclosure walls of the Great Sphinx. But of course, we don't see this. These stones are not foundation stones, they are part of the Western Wall, and if ancient, they would have been exposed to heavy rain since they were first constructed. Some counter this argument and say the wall may have been originally buried, but there is no evidence of this at all. For the past 5,000 years, the climate in Lebanon has been going through a rough 500 year cycle. Seasonal, but on the whole going from wet periods to dry and wet again. The geology and climatology analysis doesn't mean the Trilithon has to be Roman. It could be Phoenician or even slightly older. It just means that, as far as I can tell, with a background in geology, they cannot be truly ancient. If Callian's observation of the Roman drum in the foundations is correct, I would say the site has to be Roman. But if the drum is inaccurate, I would still say it is Roman, but also possibly Phoenician, based on the geology. So, is there any other information available that can suggest a Roman origin? Researcher Andrew Collins wrote that no one can rightly say whether or not the Romans really did have the technology and expertise to construct the Western Wall of Baalbek, but there is very good reason to build it. Archaeologists very well know the purpose of it. It was, without doubt, a retaining wall. The Greeks constructed incredible retaining walls, but the Romans really perfected the art. Retaining walls hold back soil to stop it creeping down hillsides and destabilising the land. The bigger and heavier the stones used, the better the retaining wall. 
you need fine joints and big, uncut stones to ensure minimal movement. So much work would go into this structure because without it, there is no point in building large temples or settlements. At Baalbek, the platform that houses the temples was built right on the side of a huge hill, where soil erosion was and continues to be a huge problem. So, a retaining wall was necessary to build and maintain a large level platform. Interestingly, Baalbek actually has one of the biggest soil erosion problems in the world, and soil from the top of the hill has been sliding down into the valley for hundreds of years, mainly due to deforestation. The famous Lebanese cedar tree roots kept the soil in place for millennia, but since Phoenician times, deforestation has created a growing problem and one that the Romans would have been all too aware of. At the same time that the Romans began their estimated 200 year project at Baalbek, the Roman client King Herod was renovating the Temple Mount. He expanded it, doubled its size, but to do this he also had to construct a huge retaining wall. A portion of this wall still remains today, with several huge blocks lined up. The four largest stones are known as the Master Course. The weight of the heaviest block is 630 tons, yet nobody doubts the Romans cut, moved and lifted these stones into position. These aren't much smaller than the Baalbek stones, yet don't generate half as much attention. I guess you could speculate that these stones were also pre-Roman, but as yet, there is no real hard evidence for such an assumption. I'm not saying in this specific video how I believe the Romans moved the master course, all I am saying is that none of the experts claim they didn't. So, if they could move these huge megaliths in Jerusalem, surely they could have applied the same methods across the empire over in Baalbek. Moving large stones doesn't require ancient high technology, and this is seen in the 18th century with the Russian Thunderstone, found at Lacta inland from the Gulf of Finland in 1768. The French sculptor Etienne Maurice Falconet wanted to work and shape the stone at the location, but records show that Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia, ordered the stone to be moved to St. Petersburg before work began. I know some people disagree with the next claim, but the original block was one and a half times the mass of the Baalbek Trilithon stones, around 1,200 tonnes. The original lump of stone was slightly smaller in dimensions, but it is a lump of solid granite, not limestone, so it was much heavier. So how was it moved? As suspected, no aliens, giants or machines were needed. First of all, they waited until winter, when the ground was frozen, and then dragged the stone along the icy surface so there was little friction towards the shoreline. They then managed to transport it by boat, building an enormous barge, supported on either side by two full-sized warships. When it reached the city, engineer Marinos Kaboris developed a metallic sledge that slid over bronze spheres, each about 6 inches in diameter, over a track. No animals or machines were used, just brain power, brute force and capstans, a technology that has been around since Roman times. It took 400 men 9 months to move it, and artists such as I. F. Schley even drew the transportation, shown here in an engraving from 1770. As you can see, the rock is much larger than how it appears today. What this example shows is that moving large rocks isn't out of the scope of human possibility, and saying the Romans accomplished it isn't that much of a stretch of the imagination. If you want to argue that it was the Phoenicians who are responsible for the Baalbek Trilithon, we have the problem of a lack of comparable examples, which is why logic points to the Romans. Brian Forster pointed out in a comment that the stone of the pregnant lady is still attached, which is therefore my error. I had read conflicting reports of whether or not this was the case, but this doesn't change my opinion of its age. Why it wasn't finished is open to discussion, for example, some say it had a large fracture. But if, as many say, it was once covered over, maybe the soil above the quarry became destabilised and avalanched over it and therefore the work was abandoned. Who knows? I'll have to look at this in more detail soon. 
A part 3 on this Baalbek special is in the works, where I look at the site before the Roman temples, as well as the possible transportation methods used for the Baalbek Trilithon. But like before, I would love to hear your feedback on this video before I complete the next, because I genuinely feel that comments and discussion is important in the study of ancient history. I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong, and I'm known to change my mind. All I want to find is the truth. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.